something that's foundational uh, to consider before creating an exercise program is one, how do you measure muscular strength? How do you predict and create a value to use this value to create a eight week, 12 week training program based on this value? Okay. So I'm sure you've heard of the term one repetition maximum, right? So one RM is the greatest resistance that can be moved through a full range of motion in controlled manner with good posture. Okay. What's good and bad about the one RM is yes, this is, this represents the greatest resistance that an individual can move. It truly does uh, define individual individuals, muscular strength. However, most people I would say have the capacity to maybe do a one RM testing or shouldn't be, but it's really going to increase their risk of injury. And in a lot of settings and a lot of populations, it's not a good idea to do a true maximum one RM testing, one RM test, and to put people through that type of stress and load. Um, one from injury risk standpoint two, that stress might be way higher than the load that they can handle, um, which might put them into uh, a bit of a, you could say it, it would just put them possibly at risk for injury. Let's just say that. Um, so measuring muscular strength is really important, but in order to get a one rep max value, you have to have somebody do a one RM, right? However, that's risky. So the repetition maximum prediction method is really, really popular across all, all walks and practices in the kinesiology realm. Basically what this is doing is using some repetition maximum. So let's say you load up the bar, you have somebody go through warm up sets and so on. And then your goal, you're going to have them do, you're comfortable and know that they can do eight repetitions of a certain uh, weight. So you're going to have them do no less than eight repetitions. You're going to have them keep increasing the load with proper rest period and so on. And so they can do somewhere between, let's say six to 10 repetitions, ideally landing on eight. Whenever they fail at that highest workload between six to 10 repetitions, you can use the values associated with that. So you can use the weight and repetitions to calculate and predict someone's 1RM without putting them at that big risk of injury from 1RM testing itself, from actually moving a true 1RM. Okay. So EverFit uses the Epley equation in the EverFit platform. You can take a look at the validity, reliability, um, and so on of the Epley equation by what we talked about earlier, going hopping on a Google Scholar um, and looking into the equation. There's three or four primary equations that are used across, across the industry, but Epley is a really, really solid, relatively accurate equation. Really, really great to use. So if you see the 1RM being predicted from someone's workout on EverFit, this is because Everfit is using the natural relationship between percent one RM and how many reps an individual can do. For example, let's say most people on average have five repetitions, right? A five repetition maximum, that's equivalent to 85% of their one RM. As an example, that's the same way that Everfit uses the Epley equation to provide your clients with, hey, here's your new one repetition maximum. Congratulations. This is the highest that you've ever had. It's because they moved a weight more times than they ever had at that specific weight, AKA the prediction equation will bump up their one RM and they'll be stronger. Okay. Um, so measuring muscular strength is a really important concept. That's at the basis of creating good problem. And the reason being is that repetition maximum will allow you to predict the one RM and then based on the 1RM, certain percentages of an individual's 1RM can be used to elicit specific responses, which we're going to talk about a little bit later. Okay. Um, so just a recap on the repetition maximum. RM is used when the population being tested is not safe to push to maximal exertion or during training programs. So another way to use repetition maximum training in a way that I really like to is within auto-regulation. So let's say you get an individual and you create a program, a 12 week training program, right? Throughout the course of those 12 weeks, there's a lot of life stresses that are occur. There's a lot of ups and downs and fluctuations that are going to occur within that program. So is it safe to say that you should base that entire program based on their initial week one repetition maximum prediction? You could, but is it going to limit your capacity to improve this person's function within those 12 weeks? Maybe, maybe not, but I think it's best to auto-regulate, to adjust with the individual. 
So for example, a good example of autoregulation is at the last set of a working series, right? So let's say somebody is working on five by five, classic five by five strength training. The last set of five, if you prescribe a load of let's say 225 pounds on back squat, you let them in that last set do as many reps as you can, as they can. Okay. Of course, with the spotter or um, a asterisk, as many reps as you can, if they don't have the spotter with good form and so on. But let's say you prescribe them at this load, they should be able to do five reps based on the algorithm. Okay. They all of a sudden complete 12 repetitions. Okay. You know, this individual had a really, really immediate strength response to the training. So they probably haven't been training too long. Their 1RM already is a lot higher than what it was, or maybe they're sandbagging it in the testing or whatever it might be. Now you can, through Everfit, auto-regulate their training, right? Adapt on the fly, be like, okay, here's your new 1RM. And now let's get even closer to the accurate characteristic and profile trainings loads that we want to be within to improve endurance, hypertrophy, strength, power, whatever that might be. Okay. Um, so that's a really good way to use auto-regulation within that uh, EverFit program. So I have some questions here um, just for you to think about who do you assume is safe to do 1RM testing? Um, and who would you assume to do a repetition maximum test and estimate? I think a really simple and clear way to put this is someone with a very long training history, maybe two to three years, you can assume it's relatively safe to do a 1RM. Even at that point, it might not be the best idea, especially if this is an athlete in season um, and so on. So you really want to consider, is it really a good time or do you want to increase the risk of this individual? Um, or who would you assume is best to do a repetition maximum and estimate this is going to be your higher at risk populations. Um, and then with those populations, usually a really conservative approach should be used. This is a 10 to 15 repetition maximum. This is in your truly high risk. So this is like your clinical population, um, like type setting, but with that, even 10 to 15 repetition maximum, yeah, it might not give you the most accurate strength one RM level, but it will give you an idea of this individual's functional capacity at that time to be a good exercise scientist and a good coach practitioner to say, okay, this individual improved their capacity pre to post their predicted strength is here post-training their predicted strength had improved and so on. Okay. There is, however, a really important uh, assumption to consider in repetition maximum testing. And that's that the athlete or individual provided a genuine maximum effort. Okay. So let's say the individual just based on motivation or whatever it could be, they stopped at nine repetitions, but they could have done 10, right? They could have done that. So this individual's program based on the repetition maximum, uh, equation, their program, all the weights, every lift that they do is going to be slightly less than it would have been if they do 10 repetitions. Okay. So there is assumptions associated repetition maximum, which is why I think it's really, really important to employ auto-regulation and to track an athlete's one rep max, specifically their predicted one rep max throughout a training cycle. That way you can regulate, increase it, decrease it, and so on as this individual transitions through your training.